Amen. Can we all stand together this morning? Anybody come to worship the Lord today? Oh, come on. I'll give you one more chance. Anybody come to worship the Lord today? Oh, shame is a prison as cruel as the grave. Shame is a robber and he's come to take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer. Lift me up from the grave.
come on, is anybody coming out of the grave today? Is anybody coming out of the grave? I was buried beneath my shame. to carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I met you I was breathing but not alive and all my failures I tried share a passage of scripture with you. If you haven't noticed, 
We're singing about coming out of the grave this morning. Has, has God raised anyone from death to life? Has, has God, ha, has God brought anybody out of darkness into his marvelous light in this room today? If he hasn't, I believe God spoke to my spirit and said, I'm going to raise some things back to life this morning. I, I believe it as sure as I've ever heard him. I heard him say, I'm going to raise some dead things back to life in this house this morning. And maybe for you, that's, that's sin. But maybe for you, he's going to resurrect a dream that has died. Maybe for you, he's going to restore some hope that has been lost. But whatever it looks like for you, he's going to raise some things back to life this morning. And as we continue in worship, I want to share a passage out of Romans 6. It says, since we have been united with him in death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin and darkness. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him because when he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you should consider yourself to be dead to the power of sin and darkness and alive through Christ Jesus. I ask you one more time, has God raised anybody from death to life in this room? If you're thankful for it, Come on, if you're thankful for it, give him a shout of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't we stretch those hands towards heaven this morning and just thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his resurrecting power in our lives today.
Christ who lives within me. Peace no longer I live, but Christ who lives within me. Christ who lives within me. From beginning to the end, you desire. for resurrected dreams today. We thank you for deliverance today. We thank you for salvation today. We thank you for healing today. Come on, whatever you need, whatever you need, he's the answer. Whatever you need, he has it. He has it. He holds it in his hand, and he extends his hand to you today. So why don't you just reach up with hands extended all across this sanctuary and just receive whatever blessing he wants to bestow upon your life today, whatever it is that he wants to pour out. Come on, it's okay to ask him for it. It's all right. Come on, just tell him what you need. Tell him what you want today. It's here, it's here, and he's restoring it, he's restoring it, hallelujah. Come on, keep those hands raised. Keep those hands raised towards heaven today. I believe he's gonna turn some graves into gardens this morning. Cause I searched the world 
but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along, yes you did. You put me back together. Desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's no
change our situation. Father, I thank you that we've been singing about your glory and your power this morning, that not even the graves can hold you down. You bring light into the darkness. And Father, I thank you right now that your word is so powerful, it will not return void. Lord, for those that are sick here this morning, Lord, you send your word to heal our diseases. Father, I ask you right now to touch Brother Raver, and I ask you to touch Pastor Moody. Lord, I ask you to touch Sarah Hawkins. Lord, and for every other person in this place that needs a healing in their body, would you just raise your hand right now? Because he is the Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the one who heals your body. If you have someone else in your family, I have somebody in my family that has cancer right now. And even cancer must bow his knee to the Lord Almighty. There is no sickness in heaven. So therefore, we declare and decree healing over this place. Lord, I thank you that you have given us the keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever things we bind on this earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever things we loose on this earth shall be loosed in heaven. And Lord, that is not of our own authority. But God, what you have already released in heaven, you give us the power out of our mouth to declare and decree your word. So let it be over this home and this house. Lord, let healing rest here. Lord, I thank you for your breath of life, bringing refreshing and renewing, Lord, to our spirits. For those that have succumbed, Lord, that their bones are dry and weary, Lord, because their hearts are faint. God, I ask you to renew and restore. Breathe a new fresh of wind. Lord, your breath that breathed life and true humanity in the beginning. God, breathe it over this place again. God, I thank you that you shine light into our darkness. Illumine the thoughts of our mind to see your word is true over every one of our situations and your promises bring us the life that you gave us life and that life abundantly. And we declare it today, and so shall it be. And everyone that agrees, would you say amen with me this morning? Amen! Anybody else agree? Amen, amen, amen! Woo! I'm thankful I came this morning, are you? Would you turn, would you nod to your neighbor and say welcome? We're glad to have you this morning at South Cleveland. We might not be shaking hands, but we can shake our heads and we can nod to you and say we're so glad to see you. You have chosen a great place to be this morning. We've already worshiped in the rain at 8 a.m. at drive-in service, so you always have options here. We have our 9.30 radio service. We have our inside 10 a.m. and online, so welcome to our e-family. For those that are watching, we say we greet you, and we're glad that you're with us. Choosing to worship the Lord, however, is easiest for you. You have made a good, good decision. There's so many things happening here at South Cleveland, and we want to know who you are. We want to know how we can connect with you. We want to know how we can minister to your family. There are cards in front of you on the, on the pews there. You can take those out and fill them out. If you would like to get some communication from us, please check that little box that said, would like to get more connected, and we will put you together in the right places. Wednesday night, we do have inside classes for all ages, so come and worship with us. For our adults, we have our rotational classes. Um, we have three different ones for you to choose from, but we have nursery, youth, and we are excited because Pastor Lipsy is going to be kicking off our uh, college and career this week, but he has some exciting news that we're going to share with you here in just a few minutes. But just know that whenever you come into this place, that there's been a lot of prayer that's been prayed over this. Amen. You can't just walk into a service like this and feel the Spirit of the Lord without there being some background and some work going into it. So we are so thankful, and you are in the right place this morning. Your giving can go uncontin or uninterrupted. You can give on the way out. You can give online at southcleveland.org. You can text to give, 423-207-1043, and just know that this is good soil. I like to put my money into good investments and into good soil, and you have the same knowledge to know that wherever you give your money here at South Cleveland, it is being watched over and being used for the glory of God. We are so excited, though, to announce that we have some new things happening with our staff. We've already done some um, shifting, and Josh is leading us into the presence of the Lord. Didn't the worship team do an amazing job this morning? Candace, oh, I love that voice. <laughs> amazing, amazing job. And so we're very excited about that. But uh, for all of our college students that are coming back, where we say welcome to you. So please let us know who you are. But we have a little announcement, and we're going to let uh, our video show right now. Hello, South Cleveland. Carmen Lastoria here with my wife, Shaley. And we are so excited to be coming home to South Cleveland to work with our college and young adults. Yes, like Carmen said, we are really thrilled to be back at South Cleveland at home, and we are so excited to meet you all and to just do life together. 
South Cleveland has had a special place in my heart. It's where I went to school when I was at Lee University. My wife and I attended there for many years. Our daughter was dedicated to the Lord by Pastor Lipsy. So we are truly happy to be serving on staff and working with our college and young adults. I want to remind all of our college students that this Wednesday, September 2nd, Pastor Lipsy will be hosting a barbecue in the Ministry Center Cafe. It is going to be delicious. You are not going to want to miss it. I wish I could be there. Make sure to save me some. Uh, but our first Sunday will be September 13th, and we want to encourage you guys to be with us on September 13th uh, in our morning worship service. And then Sunday evening, uh, we'll be hosting a cookout. Pastor Lipsy and Dawn will be hosting us at their house, and it'll be just an opportunity for us to get to know you guys, you guys to get to know us a little bit more, and just to talk about everything that we believe God wants to do in the lives of our college students uh, over the next several months. I believe God wants us to go to the next level. I believe he wants us to go to the next level in our faith and draw closer to him, go to the next level in our ministry where we are serving others and sharing the love, hope, and freedom that Christ provides with those around us in different ministry settings. I believe that he wants to, for us to go to the next level in our relationships, for us to have Paul and Barnabas and Timothys in our lives. Timothys, people we can mentor, uh, Paul's mentors to us, and also Barnabas's, so that we can build meaningful relationships and accountability with those around us. And then I believe he wants you to go to the next level in your academics or in your job or as you go into grad school. Whatever, whatever area you may be going into, we believe God wants you to go to the next level. And so we're excited to take that step with you. And once again, we are so thrilled to be back home at South Cleveland. So college students, don't miss this Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Pastor Lipsy be serving up some delicious barbecue. We want to encourage you to share your contact information with him and we'll be getting in contact with you guys. And then Sunday, September 13th, we can't wait to worship together with all of you and then hang out Sunday evening for a cookout over at Pastor Lipsy and Sister Dawn's house. So we'll see you very soon and we are so excited to be home at South Cleveland. Can we just sing this song? It's an old song, but I'm gonna tell you, this song has just been resounding over and over and over all throughout this pandemic. I've sang it all of my life, but, but especially all throughout this pandemic, it's like each and every day I woke up with this song on my heart. And I just wonder if we could sing it together right before pastor comes. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future, and life is worth.
today I'm thankful that you live. I'm thankful that you own your throne. I'm thankful that you rule and that you reign. That he who watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. I thank you that today you're going to minister to this house in spectacular fashion. And our life will be more rich when we leave this house than when we came. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, well, would you clap your hands and give him praise and glory? Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, open with me very quickly this morning to the 23rd Psalm. Psalm 23, and I want to preach to you just for a few moments about the glorious truth that the Lord is our shepherd. Is anybody thankful today that he's your shepherd? I, I'm thankful today that the Lord is indeed my shepherd. And I, and I want him to lead, guide, and direct you every step of your life. La last week I preached to you uh, on the truth that the Lord is our helper. The Hebrew name for that is Jehovah Ezer. The Lord is our helper. And I shared with you, oh, how wonderfully that he has helped me in my life. He has been better to me than I could po ever possibly deserve. Is that your testimony too, that the Lord has been better to you than you deserve, that he has been Jehovah Ezer, the Lord that has helped you? You say, Pastor Lipsy, how has he, hey, Brother Lipsy, how has he helped you? I'll tell you how he's helped me. He's, he, he helped me by giving me a wife that is more than I deserve. If you're here today and you're a husband and you know that you married above your head, why don't you clap your hands and shout amen today, man. I'm trying to give you an opportunity uh, to get some points there. I'm trying to give you an opportunity for your wife to be pleased with you. I, I know that I am glad that the Lord helped me. He was Jehovah Ezer by helping me get a wife that I did not deserve. I shared with you not only did he help me by giving me a wife that is better than I deserve, but but he helped me by, by giving me a trade and by miraculously teaching me uh, how to do something that would give me the ability to provide for my family for, for years uh, to come. And I shared the story with you last week how he miraculously taught me how to trim houses and I was able uh, to begin doing this really not knowing what I was doing and I was just helped by God. Not only did he help me, was he Jehovah Ezer as it related uh, to finding a wife. Not only was he Jehovah Ezer as it related to helping me find the trade, but as it relates to him being my helper in ministry, he has helped me beyond my wildest imagination. He has been Jehovah Ezer as he helped me in ministry. I shared with you that when I planted my first church, I had no idea what I was doing. And some of you may be looking at me this morning and saying, Pastor Lipsy, after five years of you leading us, I'm still not sure if you have an idea what you're doing. Well, he is still my helper, and he has blessed me in ministry beyond my wildest imaginations. He has, he has helped me and granted me favor and granted me success that was beyond my capability, success that was beyond my talent, success that was beyond my education. God has been my helper, and, and I had never really proclaimed him uh, by this Hebrew name, Jehovah Ezer. I, I, I'd never preached on the name Jehovah Ezer. I'd never made that proclamation in prayer or in worship. I knew him to be my helper, but 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 the, the, the Hebrew name Jehovah Ezer is just not as popular as the Hebrew name Jehovah Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd, or Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my provider, or Jehovah 
Jehovah Sitkanu, the Lord is my righteousness. Jehovah Mekadishkim, the Lord is my sanctifier. Jehovah uh, Rapha, the Lord is my healer. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace. These Hebrew names we hear in worship circles all of the time, but, but I had never proclaimed the name Jehovah Ezer. But certainly this is what uh, the prophet Samuel was proclaiming in 1 Samuel, the seventh chapter. The Philistines are surrounding Israel, and they, they have Israel backed into a corner. They have Israel hemmed in, and Israel feels like there's no way out. And the prophet Samuel says, we're going to fast, and we're going to seek God, and we're going to pray, and we're going to worship, and we're going to ask God to intervene upon our behalf. And the Bible said, as Israel followed the instructions of the prophet and fasted and prayed and worshiped and sought God on their behalf, that the Lord God Almighty thundered against the Philistines. Now, maybe you've never been pressed so hard that you needed God to thunder at a situation, but I know what it is to be hemmed in. I, I know what it is to be pressed hard on every side and have it seem that the enemy was about to overwhelm me and out of nowhere the Lord God of heaven thundered in that situation and brought me the victory where that day the Lord thundered against the Philistines. Israel began to pursue them and the Bible said as Israel won the victory that the prophet Samuel picked up a stone and called it Ebenezer for he said thus far the Lord has been good to me. Now, I don't know what the story of your life is thus far, but I can tell you the story of my life, the, my life thus far is this. Thus far, the Lord has been good to me. Thus far, the Lord has blessed me. Thus far, the Lord has prospered me. I don't know about you, but thus far, he has caused my life to be like a tree that's planted by rivers of living water that brings forth his fruit in his season and my leaf has not withered and everything that I've ever done has prospered. I've come by to tell somebody thus far the Lord has been good to you. If he's been good to you, you should clap your hands and shout amen today. So this morning I want to spend just a few moments and I want to preach to you from the Psalm, the, the 23rd Psalm on the names of God. And I'm really just going to set up a series this morning and just barely get into it. I love the first three words of this verse. I, I love the first three words in this phrase, the Lord is is. And, and sometimes I think we miss the significance of those three words in a rush to get to the truth that the Lord is our shepherd. If How many know, if not careful sometimes, in a rush to get to one place, we miss something else that is significant. And, and I believe in a rush to get to the truth that the Lord is our shepherd, we bypass the foundational truth, the foundation of the ability for the Lord to be your shepherd is this, that the Lord is. What do you mean, Brother Lipsy? If the Lord is not, then he can't be your shepherd. If the Lord is not, he can't be your provider. If the Lord is not, he can't be your helper. If the Lord is not, he can't be your healer. If the Lord is not, he can't be the one that baptizes with the Holy Ghost. So before God can be any of those things, things to you. He must first be the Lord that is. I don't know about you, but I am convinced that he is this morning. The Bible said he that comes to God must first believe that he is. Does anybody in the house believe that he is today? The psalmist believed that he is. Listen, I want you to know I am convinced that he is. Listen, it doesn't matter today how secular this society becomes. It doesn't matter how hard the education system pushes against the idea of intelligent design. They can push against the idea of intelligent design all that they want to, and they cannot change my mind. I believe in the beginning God created the heavens and the 
earth. I believe John the Beloved's words as he picked up his pen and said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him nothing that is made was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. I've come by to tell you today that I still believe that the Lord is. If you're glad that he is, you ought to clap your hands and shout amen this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, he is. Don't spit on him. He, he is. Now, now we see in the 23rd Psalm uh, something that is called reverential capitalization. It, it doesn't happen everywhere in the Bible. Many times when you read the name Lord in the Bible, as a matter of fact, most times when you read the name Lord in the Bible, it will be capital L, little O, little R, little D, but not in the 23rd Psalm. In the 23rd Psalm, when he says the Lord is, the, the word Lord is spelled capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, is reverential capitalization. I've got news for you today. There is no God like the God of Psalm 23. Somebody shout amen. The, the psalmist understood that there was no God like his God. The psalmist understood that not only was there no God above the Lord, but there is no God beside the Lord. Does anybody still believe that in 2020? Listen, I know that in 2020, people are screaming at us that we have to embrace other faiths. People are screaming at us that we have to be inclusive, and by no means should you ever be mean-spirited to people of other faiths. By no means should you ever not be, as a matter of fact, you should be kinder and more gracious and more gentle to people who are outside the faith of Christianity than you are to those inside the faith of Christianity. Oh, but you need to hear this preacher today. While I will be kind, while I will be respectful, while I will try to win them, I want to make it clear there is no God above him, nor is there any God beside him. He stands alone in the solitude of himself. He is uncreated, unequaled, unparalleled, and unmatched. That's why the Bible says that while he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Wherefore, God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, somebody shout Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess of things on heaven and of things on earth. And and of things under the earth, that Jesus Christ, he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you believe today, there's none like him. You ought to clap your hands and give him praise. That there is so much preaching ground on this idea that there is none like him him that you can preach until you're blue in the face. But without question, my, my favorite proof text for the exclusiveness of our God, my, my favorite proof text for the deity and the majesty of our God is when Israel is in battle against the Philistines. They, they have been routed because they have taken the devoted things of Jericho. When they won the battle in Jericho, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the house of Israel stole from the plunder and hid it under his tent. They went to the battle of Ai. The, me the men of Ai did rout. The men, I mean, it is an amazing story as you continue to read. And so many times as Israel and the Philistines come into battle, there's difficulty. There's conflict, and, and, and there's just something created there that causes constant uh, conflict to arise. And when Hophni and Phinehas, the two wicked sons of Eli, see that Israel is being defeated at another time in their narrative of their battles with the Philistines, the Bible said that they went and they got the Ark of the Covenant, and they brought it to the battlefield, and they laid the Ark of the Covenant at the feet of their god Dagon. Now here is what the Philistines were saying by doing this. They were saying that the God of Israel will pay homage to the God of the Philistines. They were saying that the God of Israel will show reverence, will show respect, 
will show honor to the God of the Philistines. They were saying, I'm tired of you saying that your God is above every other God, and we want you to know today that our handmade God is as good as your uncreated God. But the Bible said on the morrow, Brother Yadel, when the priest of Dagon went to the house of Dagon, they found that Dagon had fallen flat on his face and was prostrate before the Ark of the Covenant. And then the priest of Dagon did the dumbest thing ever recorded in the history of humanity. Charlie, the Bible says they went to their God and they picked him up, they dusted him off, and they put him back in his place. Now let me tell you something on this Sunday morning. If you're serving a God that needs to be picked up, if you're serving a God that needs to be dusted off, if you're serving a God that needs to be put back in his place, you are serving the wrong God. And the God that I serve and the God that David knew is a God that never needs to be picked up. He's a God that never needs to be dusted off. He's a God that never be, needs to be put back in his place. But on the contrary, he comes to you and I and he picks us up. Is anybody in this house ever been picked up by God? He, he comes to you and I and he dusts us off. Have you ever been dusted off? by the Creator. He comes to you and I and He puts us back in our place. I've come by to tell you that your God is peerless. Your God is matchless. David said in Psalm 34, my soul will make her boast in the Lord. Listen, I don't know what you're boasting about today, but I am boasting in the power and in the might of the Lord God Jehovah. If you believe it, you ought to clap your hands. Shout amen today. The Lord is. The Lord is. Now, now look with me at the 23rd Psalm. And, and, and let's move quickly and, and, and set up a stage for these Hebrew names of God. Last week we preached that the Lord is our helper. He is a very present help. In our time of trouble. Here is what I want to talk to you about today. You ready for this? Verse 1. The Lord is our shepherd. Somebody give me the Hebrew name. Jehovah Rohi. It means the Lord is our shepherd. Listen to the next phrase. I shall not want. What is the Hebrew name for that? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Listen, just, just follow these phrases, and you're going to find that David was in relationship with the Hebrew names of God. Listen to what David says. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the quiet waters. Do you hear a Hebrew name there? He is Jehovah Shalom, the God who grants us peace. Keep reading. Listen to what you're going to find out. He restores my soul. Jehovah Mekadishkim, the Lord my sanctifier. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. Jehovah sit canoe. The Lord our righteousness. Listen, this one is absolutely my favorite Hebrew name of God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Jehovah Shama. It, it, it is translated the Lord who is there and many people declare it to be a literal translation that says the Lord who is there, there, there and there. He's the God that cannot be contained. Have you ever needed him to be in more than one place at one time? Hello, have you ever had two catastrophes going on at once and he became the Lord who was there and the Lord who was there and the Lord who was there? So for the next few weeks, I'm going to talk to you about the Lord as your shepherd. I'm going to talk to you about the Lord as your provider, the Lord as your righteousness, the Lord as your peace, the Lord who is with you every step of the way. But here's what I want you to get in your spirit today. He can 
can't be any of those things to you unless you first believe those three words, the Lord is. I've got news for you. No matter what your eyes see, no matter what your ears hear, no matter what your feelings feel, the Lord is. How do you know he is, Brother Lipsy? First of all, I know he is by the spirit of revelation. I preached about that a little bit last week in Matthew, the 16th chapter, when Jesus said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they answered and said, Some say you're John the Baptist. Others say you're Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus said, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed are thou, Simon bought Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Listen, if you know who he is today, there is one reason you know it. You know it because the spirit of revelation shone upon your path and granted you the understanding that Jesus was not just a priest. He was not just a prophet. He was not just a good man, but he is the son of the living God that riseth with healing in his wings. So the first way, the foundational uh, beginning for you to know who he is is revelation. But I don't know it strictly by revelation. Revelation brought me into the movement. But after I came into the movement, I know he is because his fingerprints are all over my life. He has touched me. He has healed me. He has delivered me. He has helped me. He has led me in strange places. Listen, today, none of you in this building, except maybe the Moody's, have ever met my mother. She's been gone for seven or eight years today. But you cannot convince me that she never lived. If I was arrested today and put in a cell of, of, of a prison with the intent of trying to brainwash me to make me believe that Jane Lipsy, who I've not seen for seven years, Jane Lipsy, who I've not touched for seven years, Jane Lipsy, whose voice I've not heard for seven years, never existed. And for 20 years, they tried to brainwash her reality out of my life. I've got news for you. There's nothing they could do. There's no treatment. There's no program. There's, no, there's not one thing that they, they could not deprogram her reality from my mind because I remember her touch. I remember the time she wiped my tears. I remember the time she bandaged my knee. I remember the time that she embraced me out of failure and said, baby, God is with you and you can make it. Just put your left foot in front of your right foot. Listen, her fingerprints still today are all over my life. We are living in trying times today. We are living in the midst of a pandemic. We are living in the midst of unrest. We are living in the midst of uncertainty. And many people would say to you and I as believers, why do you go down there to 1846 Volunteer Drive? Why do you worship? Why do you pray? Why do you honor God? Can't you tell this world is going to hell in a handbasket? Let me tell you something. It does not matter what's taking place around this preacher today. I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer lives and in the last day I will see him. I will see him for myself and not another. The Lord is. Stand to your feet with me all over this house. The Lord is. I know what the words of the song that we sang just before I preached say. But, but, but let, me, let me change them for the sake of preaching. If I was sitting by Jim Reynolds, I'd have a mask on too. I know the iconic words say because he lives. But I got news for you. Because he is. I can face tomorrow. I got news for you, Joni Dale. Because he is. All fear is gone. <laughs> because I know 
I know he holds my future. My life is worth the living. Huh. Not, not because I got a car to drive. My, my life is worth the living, not because I got a nice house to go to. My, my, my life is worth the living just because he is. I, I've got one purpose in preaching to you right now, to remind you that he is. Huh. I'm looking around this sanctuary and all the people gathered in here to worship I was at a meeting this week where we, we learned that the national average of churches who are opening their doors right now to in-person worship is about 35% of their normal pre-pandemic crowd. Why is that different with South Cleveland? We, 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 I would say we're at 80 to 85% with this class, with this class. Y'all are a Sunday school class this morning. And, and the parking lot service. I, I'm convinced that I've been blessed to pastor a church filled with people who are convinced that he is. I believe that. That's, that's not a pat on my back. You, you, most of you had that understanding long before I got here. My, 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 my best friend for 13 years preached to you and built faith in you that caused you to know he is. Before he got here, Horace Ward preached to you. Mark Williams preached to you. Pastor Guyton preached to you. Listen, listen. Brother Jeffords preached to you, and your faith has been built to the place that no matter what goes on around you, he is. The doctor can look at you and say you're sick and you're going to die. You may not like that. Matter of fact, you won't like that. I, I won't like that. But I promise you one thing, whatever diagnosis they give me, I will not leave there wagging my head nor my tongue saying, well, if God was real, don't matter. It cannot change my understanding that he is. And, and then, because I know he is, it opens my life up to every possibility of every name that he has and the provision that comes with it. Because he is, he's going to provide. Because he is, he's going to heal. Because he is, he's going to deliver. You, you listen to me. The Lord is. He is with you. For the next few weeks, I'm going to preach about a shepherd. I'm going to preach about a provider. I'm going to preach about a sanctifier. I'm going to preach about a righteous God. And I'm going to preach about a God who is there, there, and there. T today, whatever you need him to be, he is. Slip your hands to heaven all over this house. Why don't you just say that because he is? Because he Woo! is, I can face tomorrow. Because he is, all fear is gone. Because Just because 
hands. He Say it again, and I'm going to pray for you. Say it again. Because he is, I can face tomorrow. Because he I'm going to bless you. something in your life right now that you need a Lord who is the touch, raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you. You need a Lord who is, hands are going up all over this house. God, come be real to your people. God, come and do for them what they cannot do for themselves. God, come and supernaturally make ways for them where there are no way. God, come and fill in the gaps. God, come and make up the hedge. God, do for them what only you can do. Make yourself known to them this week with supernatural manifestations. And all of God's people said, if you're glad you came to church, would you clap your hands and bless him? Stay with me. Stay with me just for a moment. Stay with me just for a moment before the ushers dismiss you. We're starting at 10. You can beat the Baptist to the restaurant. Let me, let me, let, let, let me speak very quickly to our teenagers and to our college and career students. To, to our college and career students, be here this Wednesday night. I will be meeting you in the church cafe. I'll be gathering all of your uh, contact information so we can pass it on to our new college and career staff members. Br Brother Carmen uh, is a is a full-time employee of Lee University, and he's continuing to do, to, to, to do that. He's keeping his full-time job and just coming on in a staff role here to minister to us. Well, what does he do? He's the director of sports. Lee, is that his title? Help me. Director of sports information. He is the voice of Lee uh, and, and just a talented young man with God's touch on his life and and he left South Cleveland about three and a half years ago to go be a youth pastor uh, in Sweetwater Tennessee has been there about three and a half years and we are excited that he and his bride are coming home I'll be getting your contact information to pass it on to him but come and meet with me we're gonna have barbecue for a host of college students so y'all bring your friends come eat dinner with me let me get to know you Wednesday night at the at the ministry center the gray building at the bottom of the hill we're gonna have a great night to our teenagers tonight we are coming to my house I think we're gonna push through at my house I, I know it's rained a little bit and it's wet but teenagers can have a pool party you can't cancel a pool party because it rained what are you scared you're gonna get wet uh, so so teenagers come tonight at my house at four o'clock I'm cooking hamburgers and hot dogs for you. Uh, Brother Brandon and Sister Jess are going to be there, and you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful night uh, of fun and entertainment. The rest of you just go do whatever you want to do. I mean, it don't it don't matter. You can cook a hot dog, you can fly a kite, you can pitch a tent. It don't. I, I, I saw I, I saw on the on the news right before I came out a, a three year old kid somewhere was flying a kite. Did anybody see that picture? They they were on a beach flying a kite, and and. The, the kite picked her up off the ground, and she was in there. Debbie, I bet you she was in there 25 feet. Everybody was running.
running under her. <laughs> and I mean, she just came right down and right into mama's arms. I mean, just blessed my sanctified uh, soul. So you can go fly a kite if you're not a teenager today. It doesn't matter to us what you do. Be careful. It's windy uh, out there. Come Wednesday night. It's going to be a wonderful night. Or if you will let us, our ushers will come to you and dismiss your role. If you would please be kind and be patient and bear with us, we would appreciate it. They're going to let you go from the back to the front. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. I'll see you Wednesday night. Teenagers, I'll see you tonight. College students, I'll see you Wednesday night at the Ministry Center.